Morning everyone, Jer here on Thursday the 17th of November. I hope everyone's having a really good week. I hope we're all in good spirits. Um, there's a little bit of news floating around. I wanted to update some people on some bits as well. Um, I am planning on still continuing to do the daily leads videos um, through the World Cup and the odd live stream if and when we can as well as doing some stuff with the American Leads podcast um, over the World Cup break as well. So um, if you're wondering if we'll still be doing videos every day, we will I'll still be here. Um, feel free to join in if you want to. Um, but that's the update on the channel we'll, we'll keep going as long as there's news and there's been you know little bits and pieces as as the week has gone on already so far uh, not massive but we can we can talk about that but we'll crack on and we'll get into the news so we'll start off with um, a bit of an article from MOT Leeds this morning around Matthias Click um, in the article basically have said that Click is said to be very hurt after missing out on the World Cup squad which is understandable um, and that it doesn't look like Clicky will remain at Leeds beyond the January winter transfer window said that Click doesn't look like he's going to stick around much longer he's 32 years of age his contract does run out at the end of 2024 season and he could look to move before then. The player himself has said that he doesn't want to spend the remaining years of his career, of his career sitting on a bench. He wants to play football. So that's going to be an interesting one come the end of January where we still have Clicky if we replace them because that'll have to happen if you lose a midfielder. Also on that list, Adam Forshaw is up for sale. There is interest in the championship in him and Luke Ayling is out of contract at the end of the year as well. So we could see a proper changing of the guard from the championship squad that brought us up. It is probably needed at this stage. It is very sad to see these players move on though. They've done so much for Leeds. But it will be interesting. If Leeds lose Click and Forshaw in January, they will need to bring in re midfield reinforcements. Sam Greenwood is obviously maybe one of them, but they'll probably need to bring in somebody else as well as that. So we'll keep an eye on that and we'll see what happens there. On players at Leeds that are currently out on loan, Charlie Creswell's had an up and down season, probably more highs than lows, has found himself in and out of the Millwall side, but he's back in the Millwall side and doing pretty well over the last couple of weeks. He's got a couple of clean sheets under his belt and another goal. Four goals this season for Charlie Creswell um, and a couple of clean sheets as Millwall having a pretty decent season in the Championship. The question mark has been, is there a release? Is there a, a cancel clause in his loan deal to come back to Leeds, a recall clause? Um, and it's believed that there is one in that contract. He has 15 appearances so far this season, which isn't bad. Um, and he is playing it consistently now, which would make Leeds consider maybe leaving Charlie where he is, let him get the game time and the experience and he's before bringing him back. We spoke about this last night on the podcast and one of the things that we said was, or I said was, um, having Charlie Creswell and Pascal Stroke as our two centre-halves is a lovely, lovely thought and I think that is our future pairing of centre-backs. But in the short term, we need experience at the back. I think we need to bring in a 28 29 year old experienced centre back who can organise our defence and you know not switch off in key moments which our defence have been doing recently and again last night on the podcast we did a breakdown of the goals myself and Alex and, and Michael did a breakdown of the goals that we've conceded in the last game against Spurs and where the errors were and where the system errors or where the individual errors the more you kind of looked at it the more you kind of felt it's probably a little bit of both but there's a lot of it as on individual player mistakes so an experienced centre half would, do a, would go a long way there and then maybe you're looking at bringing Creswell off the bench to add the extra player to try and wind down games and manage games in. you can bring him in to rotate the squad around give him the odd game with the experienced player beside him there's more options there I wouldn't put the pressure on having him and Stroke as a two and a half right now I think in another year or two you're looking at that being the natural pairing and that, that's exciting that's really exciting to have that because I think they're great um, moving on then to where we are in the table there was a league table published yesterday versus the same league table the year before uh, and caused a bit of concern a lot of people were worried to see Leeds were two points worse off than they were at this point last season but there are some caveats to that and some bits to notice one thing to point out is Leeds have played one less game that game in hand that we have is against Nottingham Forest a win there would move Leeds into 12th position and would put us one point better off than we were at this stage last season it's only a point but it looks better However, when you dig a little deeper and you look at the corresponding fixtures, the same fixtures we played this season versus those same fixtures last season, Leeds are actually five points better off than they were over those same corresponding fixtures. I think I said recently it was three points, but it turns out it's actually five. So an even better position there. So all Leeds really have to do this year to be comfortable compared to last year is get the exact same results as last year and better a couple of them. That's all they need to do. I mean, four or five points more than last season puts Leeds in a very safe space over the 40-point mark, and everyone's, everyone's fine. So right now, if you look at 2021, Leeds had seven points over the, the fixtures we played this season. This year, Leeds have managed 12 points. That's progress. That is a step forward. We need to continue to do that over the course of the season. And if we do that, we should be in a much better position come the new year. 
as I said before, I still think we need to bring in additions in the new year to make sure that that stays the way it is. So, uh, And speaking of new additions, uh, incoming rumours this morning, a Jesus Vasquez, the Valencia 19-year-old left back, has been linked with Leeds today and multiple, multiple places. Radio Marca Valencia have put this out as well as being corroborated then by the Plaza Deportivo have also ran with this and clarified some issues on it as well. Not issues, some details on it um, so the Valencia left back he's 19 uh, he's been on Victor Orta's radar apparently for a while but this is a signing Leeds will be looking at bringing into play on the 21 side and fill the left back gap we have there Leeds have looked at Kai Wagner Leeds have looked at Rafael Guerrero as well as Parisi at Empoli so there's, there's a lot of left backs we looked at for the first team um, as well as Joe Scali from, from Gladbach as well the American international 19 year old this will be another 19 year old but this will very much be another 21 player coming in so that will actually fill that gap and give us more options at left back I think we could see Junior Firpo go out the door in January I think Jesse's kind of uh, seen enough of him the only issue with this is that the player is being also watched by Inter Milan and AZ Alkmaar Inter Milan are said to be making a move pretty soon for the player they don't want to wait around they rate him um, the, 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 the interesting thing about this player's contract is he actually he's played 149 minutes in four matches so far this season um, and he actually has a clause in his contract that will allow him to leave if he doesn't hit a set amount of minutes and so far this season he has not hit that set amount of minutes which would be which would leave him in a position where he can move on and he can leave the club without any resistance from the club so leave the keep an eye on that I think if they are going to move for this player if Inter Milan are said to be moving in the next 48 hours for him Leeds would need to step in and um, they do say and Plaza Deportivo do say that Leeds are in a better position with this deal because Leeds can offer a different structured deal apparently and um, then Inter Milan can we'll have to wait and see what happens there and get more detail on that if it comes out and um, some other news that's been causing people heartache this morning which is bizarre is Jesse Marsh has signed on to the Athletic to be a guest writer over the World Cup break people are concerned that Jesse Marsh won't be able to do his Leeds job by writing a couple of articles you can write an article in about 25 minutes you know this won't this won't interfere with, with what he's doing at Leeds at all he's got two weeks off and then he's got other stuff so he'd be doing his own job with this this is nothing unusual but this managers have done articles in newspapers for a very long time while they've been in work so um Jesse, it would be interesting to see what Jesse's take on the World Cup is. Also, his take on the Leeds players. And then we might get some information, you know, we might write some articles about the season so far from Leeds. We might get some more information from that. Jesse says an awful lot of things usually. Doesn't say an awful lot of, you know, detail in that. A lot of words, but not a lot of fact. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if we get some more information out of that as well. So that'll be good to see. Um, and that's pretty much it this morning, folks. If you want to catch the American Leeds podcast, we do do a, a breakdown of all the goals with some very high-tech imagery using PowerPoint and some other software. So it was a bit of fun last night. And um, you can check that out on the American Leeds podcast or you can check it out on the American Leeds Twitter and you'll see it there as well. Um, if you're in the comments later on, I'll drop down and, and say hi to a few people as well and get a chat going. So let me know what you think about the stories today. And if you like the channel, usual stuff, you can like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I will see you back here tomorrow for more Leeds News. Bye.